And in this video, Tom Lamb said, let there be light. Ooh. And the big outside one, look. Mega good lights they are, and there's only four of them. So, back on to uh, building the shed, part number four now. This is the last part, and this will be putting the concrete floor in, putting all the grain pedestals in, just putting the roller shutter door in, just finishing off really, so nothing really that interesting. Put my electric in, my isolator, then we've got a um, our meter, so we know how much the fans are using. A few bits in there ain't finished yet. So yeah, electrics are done. So these little X's I've marked here, this is where the pedestal's going and this is where the pipes are going up and out through there. Just started digging one out now and I'm gonna take it all out so it's nice and clean in here and then I'll backfill over the top with concrete. So when the concrete lorry backs in over the top, it won't smash all the pipes. And these are the pipes that are going underground. It's just normal, you know, airtight sewerage pipe, but it's 200 mil, so it's real big to get the airflow down it. There are the pedestals down there that I showed you in the last video. And then over here, we've got these manholes. There's four of these manholes that go in and we'll sit them probably about two or three mil lower than the concrete floor that you don't, so you don't go and hit them with a the JCB bucket. So when the pedestals aren't in, you obviously have like a manhole lid and then when you want them in, you just take the manhole lid off and you plonk the pedestal on top of these steel square plates sit in the top perfectly so that they can't move or anything. Just digging these, uh, so this is where the pipes are gonna come through the concrete walls. So there's two pipes coming through there and there's two pipes coming through just there. And uh, the pipes then basically, they stick up like that. One there, one there, one there, one there, one there. And then you just move your fan to where you want them and you put like an end cap in to stop them filling up with water. And another reason why I like putting, well, why I want to put these uh, fans in um, that are sort of fixed in the shed is because if it's like a classed as a grain drying shed or conditioning shed, you can ca claim 100% uh, capital allowance on it. So you obviously don't have to pay any tax on it, which is uh, a good, good thing to do. Or if you've got a drying floor, or any of these sort of underground pedestals, but if you have like the mobile pedestals that sort of sit in the middle of the floor that you can move about, they don't really class that as sort of a uh, capital allowance. So by doing this, it's sort of fixed to the shed. So it does class it as a uh, capital tax allowance. Turn the bucket round on the digger so I can just scoop under there because I don't really want to have to shovel it all. So I'm just sort of shoving it underneath and I'll just clean it out from the other side and then hopefully we can sand it up and lay the pipes in so here we are putting the 200 mil pipes in over that side as well and we've stringed it out from each post to each post and this x here obviously move that to there so that it sits in the middle because when we pour the concrete we're going to put some expansion joint cuts and we want the manhole to meet at all the cuts so this will be where the cuts are so cut there, cut there, cut there, cut there, and it all meets at the manhole. So that's what I want. And I'm just pushing these together. I'm to use a bit of fairy up liquid to get them together because they're really tight. So this is what it looks like outside. Just space those two slightly apart so we can get a fan on each one next to each other. And then these will be raised up out of the concrete to about there. So then the fans sit on top just about there somewhere. So we'll get them all in the right position, cement them in, and then we'll concrete all around these pipes when we do the floor, and that'll hold them all. So I've got the pan mixer on the back of the tractor. I mix a load of concrete up just to put over the pipes. Uh, just let it mix for a couple of minutes. I put half the cement in. Shove it in there. Now I'm just going to add the gravel, probably want about three of these mixer fulls, it holds about three quarters of a cube per mix. Backing it in, and the concrete, the first lot of pipes in. Now 
how wet this is. Oh, I think I made it a bit wet. Oops. So I'll go put some more sand in it. That's the first load in. So we're going to want four. One there, one there, one there, and one there. So just roughly pulled the concrete in here for a minute until I bloody get the other side concrete in and then we'll float it all off so it looks nice and neat, even though we're not going to see it. So around the back now, we're going to pour the back side. So the next day, the concrete has gone off. I've just smeared it back. We're going to cover it over with another few inches of stone. So there they are, they're in. Now what we're going to do, those manholes I showed you, we're going to sit these on top of here. So we'll we'll put like a wheelbarrow full of uh, some strong concrete around here. And then we'll sit it on and we'll laser it because the concrete's coming about two inches up that wall. So we'll sit it at like maybe two inches minus three or four mil just so it just so it sits like literally that much in the con um down from the floor so that when you scrape the bucket across the top of it you don't go and hit it and pull the manhole out now the manhole lids are in still a little bit wet one there go over here there's a lid do the one like that Down like that. Goes down there. I'm just going to clean that out. And uh, yeah, level the floor out. We're going to concrete the floor then. These are the pipes. I've left them high. Then obviously the concrete will call, sort of come up to about here. And then at a later date, I can cut them off to whatever height I want. And then I'll have the plug up there for the fan. So the cable will go to wherever we want. And what I've also done... I've tech screwed three screws into the bottom of each pipe just there, just in case you ever manage to pull the pipe out so that you can't pull the pipe out when I'm trying to pull the fan off on top of the pipes. Getting the floor ready for concrete. We were gonna do it in one big pour, but we can't do that because, well, we can, but the weather outside, you know, at night time, it's getting to minus temperatures. So we're just going to do it in two halves, make it easier. So we're shuttering up around the outside edge. This concrete on the outside here will be about an inch lower than what it is inside to stop the water going in and under. Just have to use some bits of wood here because the concrete shutters are too high on top of there. So I've got that all the way around. And then when we pour it, we'll pour the concrete and hopefully it'll all run underneath. And we can uh, might have to wheelbarrow a few bits around just to top it all up. But if you do want to see my last grain store I did, we did the whole shed in one pour, which was about 95 cubic meters of concrete. So I'll play a little clip of that now to show you what we've done. But yeah. What we'd do if we we're doing the whole concrete floor in one pour we'd chain the power floats to the back of that wood there and leave them hanging so that when we're pouring and like we get to like the middle here two blokes would like walk around and start power floating as we carried on pouring but this time we can like put the power floats down here and just do this side here and then just do that side there really important to get the floor levels right as well because if it's if the whole floor's an inch out you could end up using another sort of two loads of concrete so if we get it absolutely bang on six inches all the way over then we ain't going to spend loads more money on concrete i'd rather put more money of stone in than more money of concrete because obviously stone's a lot cheaper than what concrete is polythene down 1200 gauge polythene spin it out a bit I'll do that in a minute it stops the uh, moisture being sapped out by the uh, by the limestone underneath 
making it go off too quick and then it obviously cracks the concrete. Just shuttered the manholes up because we're obviously going to set the concrete about 10, 15 mil just above this here. Because the lid, when the manhole lid's on it, it sits slightly higher. So when we've done that, we'll just go around it with a trowel and it'll be sat about how much more so that, you know, when we go across with the bucket, don't pull it off. So I've just put these expansion bits in, just holding it out. And then obviously when it's done, we'll take that out. And then the shutters, we'll just spray them with some like diesel and um, uh, diesel and hydraulic oil to stop it all sticking. Probably just spray a bit around that round there as well. Stop it all, all the concrete sticking to it. Put these little things on just in case somebody falls over, they ain't gonna land on a spike. So this is quite interesting as well. When I built my first grain store about 10 years ago, the concrete was about 60 pound a cubic meter. Then the grain store I built five years ago, it was uh, 98 pound a cubic meter, maybe 101. And then in the space of five years, the concrete is now I've been quoted for this, 155 pound a cubic meter. So it's getting really expensive now. And the mix I'm using, I'm using an RC45 with fibers. So that's about 380 kg cement content in it. And um, also as well, not having no blend, uh, no WRA, which is water additive reducer, because we want it to go off pretty quick so we can get the power flows on it. But yeah, here's the first load of concrete going in anyway. First load, put some more water in. Two hours later, waiting for it. Here's the main bloke, look. Hi, Paul. Hello, you are right. Yeah. Shoved it under the outside. one in and there'll be another one here straight after that we want to keep constant flow of these lorries coming in
and that's the first pour done. Now this side tomorrow. I didn't want to argue, I didn't want to fight. On the back here, just finished it off with a nice little brush finish to make it look tidy. Used a finishing trowel as well around the edge, edging trowel down there. So that's all done, all that down the sides. We'll go inside and start power floating now. Just taking one of the ride on floats down here and start power floating concrete pad. I've got the first power float going. It's got a pan on the bottom like this one's got, look. You see it's not directly on the blades, whereas this one's on the blades to polish it. I've got the pans on just to get rid of all the ridges and bumps and everything. And then let it go off a bit more and then we'll obviously polish it with this one. Or we'll take the pans off all of them and have them all going and get it all done. leveled up now ready for the apron outside because when we pour all that tomorrow we'll bring it through there to here and then from here we've put like a 20 mil full outside so obviously when it rains all the water don't run under the door and into the shed so i'm gonna scrape this out and then get all the shutters ready to set up so when we come in the morning we can just start pouring and not have to do any of this right so it's now now half past five and remember this concrete was poured at about half past eight this morning at the back there and it's still not gone off enough so we are having to wait until we can get the power floats on it properly so hopefully another couple of hours this is why we don't pour the whole floor in the middle of winter like it is now because it's horrible skies and it's only five degrees if this was like 12 or 15 degrees we would have poured the whole lot today but yeah if, we'd, if we had pulled the, pulled the whole lot today, we'll be here all night waiting for it to go off with the power floats. Oh, and what's up here? These are the lads laying it. PY Concrete Specialist. Got the lighting tower set up. And it's still... It's getting there.
spray the sealer on now, just put it in this thing here. It's got this big brass handle. I'm just gonna go over the whole lot and spray it all with sealer before it completely goes off. And then we'll be back in the morning to relay the other bit. Next day, put the sealer on it. So that's that side done. And there we have it. It's all in. Just doing a bit of a little pad out the front. Get it all power floated. And that's that. Get the pedestrian door in and the roller shutter door. Unfortunately, I wanted to come out to uh, there, but um, the last concrete lorry, well, we're two cubes short, so I can do that at a later date anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. Stalls are in. On that, on that, on that, and I'll just show you how they work. So this is what it looks like. The manhole lids are over there. So they obviously sit in when this isn't in here. So when it starts to get full of corn, you take the manhole lid out and then slide this thing in. So and slide it. So it clicks in that hole like that, and then you twist the whole thing and it, it locks it in so it can't come out. So all it is is a steel square plate, and this bit here, and then these red rods look, so you don't go and hit them when you're loading it with corn. And you see all the cuts meet up to this manhole. So it's pretty straightforward. Then the pipes, obviously, as we've seen in the video, run out there, and then the fan sit outside behind that concrete wall so that we don't have to keep getting up on top of the heat and moving moving the fans about so it's going to make it a lot easier for us this one of the machines that will probably be loading the corn with a 535 12.5 uh, with an all but grain bucket as well or if that one's not loading it I've got a 560 80 that will probably be in here pushing the corn up or you know loading it out into lorries over here so the door got the pedestrian door in it's all done the door's not coming for another couple of weeks so i'll show you what exactly what's going going well i've got the same door in my other barn so i'll show you what we've got there so on these roller shutter doors down the back there they have like a brush you can just see that brush just there to stop all the uh stop all the sort of you know birds coming in and out and also as well they have these direct drive motors so this is actually in the other shed at the moment, but it's going to be exactly the same. So instead of having a chain, it's got like this bloody great big gearbox. And then the motor on there, because then oh, the chain can't come off and you ain't got to keep greasing it. So that is like idiot proof and it's really strong as well. Big three phase motor as well. Have, if you can have three phase, have three phase because they're loads better. And the other thing what we'll have, we'll obviously have a rubber strip on the bottom of the door. So it, when it comes down, it sort of seals the shed starting here stop any rats or mice getting in. Then the other thing I have done as well, on each corner, one there, one there, one there, one there, I have like a hoop put in, so that when it gets really windy, obviously these doors, I haven't had one happen, but I've known it where the wind actually blows them in and blows them out the runners. So what we'll do, we'll, um, we'll hang a ratchet strap from, from there to there, and from there to there, and then when it does get windy, you can pull it from there to there, and then from there to there. So it makes a big X in the middle, in the middle of the door with like ratchet straps, and then you can pull them tight. So if the door does try and blow in, it can't. And there you have it then. That's my four videos of building your own grain store. I don't think I've done too bad a job really. Have a few, put a few comments, let me know what you think. Um, I'm pretty pleased. And uh, don't forget to subscribe.
so see you in the next video